In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. So let's start with PE1. Okay, so here's PE1. Show run and let's have a look at the BGP configuration. So here's our BGP conf t router BGP 100. We need to now create address families for our customers. So address family IPv4 VRF blue. Redistribute OSPF 2. Redistribute connected interfaces. So we're basically redistributing this connected interface into BGP for that customer, as well as redistributing OSPF into BGP. We need to do something similar for the green VRF, redistribute OSPF, and in this case, make sure that I redistribute the right OSPF process and redistribute connected routes. So let's see what our configuration looks like now. There is OSPF for the VRFs, global OSPF, global BGP, VPN v4 BGP. This again is for advertisements from PE to PE using 96 bit addresses. And these are the customer BGP address families. I'll save that config and let's do something similar on PE2. So on PE2, we'll simply copy and paste the configuration. We've kept everything consistent, so it makes it easier. So now back on PE1, show IP route VRF blue. Notice the difference now. We are receiving routes through BGP. This is the loopback of router eight or CE3. We're also receiving advertisements from CE1 as well as the connected interface between CE3 and PE2. That's this link over here. So we've redistributed OSPF into BGP, but we still have one more step. We need to redistribute BGP into OSPF. So redistribute BGP 100 subnets. We'll do the same for the green VRF. Redistribute BGP into OSPF. So now on PE1, we've got BGP redistributed into OSPF. And that's specifically the customer OSPF instances. We need to do something similar on this side. So router OSPF2, VRF blue, redistribute BGP, router OSPF3, VRF green, redistribute BGP. So on PE2, we've got VRFs configured. We have got IP address on the global routing table. IP address and OSPF configured on the blue VRF interface to the customer, the green interface to the customer. We've got OSPF configured for customer VRFs. We've got a global OSPF instance configured. We've got BGP configured globally, as well as for blue VRF, as well as for green VRF. So now, on CE1, router six, notice we receive inter-area routes. This is the loopback of CE3. So let's do some verification to make sure that BGP is working as expected. That's CE1, router on the left in this topology. Here's CE3, debug, IP, ICMP. Show IP interface brief. Notice the loopback is 8.8.8.8. .8 Ping 8.8.8.8. .8 Ping succeeds. Notice we see output on the debug. 
Echo replies being sent from the local router to a destination of 172.16.1.2, which is the IP address of CE1. Now let's trace to the loopback of CE3. We see PE1, we see PE2, and we see the customer. Notice a label of 17 was used here, but the entire core network has been hidden from the customers. Just to make the point about network hiding, CE1 can ping CE3, but if we look at P1, the core MPLS router, notice it doesn't have 8.8.8.8 in its routing table. CE1 on the left is able to ping 8.8.8.8 without the core router knowing about that. And that's because the core routers don't know about the customer networks. A core router such as P1 is only running OSPF. It's not running BGP and it has no visibility of customer networks. Its routing table is kept small and concise and it's protected from customers injecting routes into the global routing table. The customers are separated from the core MPLS network. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.